There are many mainstream theories, such as simulation theory, string theories and holographic universe, and technological singularity. Today, however, I'd like to focus on a less familiar hypothesis proposed by two separate physicians. The first physician's research paper from the Institute of Behavioral Sciences outlines a theoretical view of population growth as a sign of pathology. It describes current global population trends as being similar to the development of a cancer growing in the body. He states that the human species, through the instrument of culture, has become the dominant force of planetary ecological change suggesting that our adaptations have become maladaptive. He explains that the human species collectively now displays all four major characteristics of a malignant process, invasion and destruction of adjacent normal tissues, rapid, uncontrolled growth, dedifferentiation, and metastasis, all of which demonstrate a malignant, ecopathological process. Interestingly, once you begin viewing the human species objectively within the context of disease, all of the problems humanity faces suddenly stand explained as symptoms of a disease occurring on a larger scale. The first corresponding characteristic he lists is the invasion and destruction of normal adjacent tissue. He explains that humanity's participation in the destruction of the planet through the processes of deforestation, mining, commercial agriculture, air, land and water pollution, all strongly reflect how cancer cells act to displace healthy cells in the body by outcompeting each other over resources. Furthermore, urbanization, which replaces our planet's topsoil with cities and urban sprawls, further exemplifies this invasion and destruction of normal adjacent tissue. Moreover, both tumors and cities require a large amount of sustenance. Accordingly, Tumors will use their circulatory processes to harvest nutrients from their surrounding environment, much in the same way cities import supplies from the surrounding area, overtaxing supplies. So, not only does humanity take advantage of each other by competing against ourselves, we also take advantage of our surrounding environment by exploiting resources such as trees, plants, animals, minerals, crystals, metals, natural gas, oil, etc. So essentially, all of the constituents that the planet needs to theoretically sustain itself and its ecosystems are being systematically absorbed into an imprint of a cancer hive mind in the form of cities and urban sprawls. The second characteristic is rapid, uncontrolled growth. This is the most pronounced characteristic of cancer. Cancer includes hundreds of diseases. However, the single common denominator they share is uncontrolled proliferation of abnormal cells. It has been roughly estimated for it to have taken over 200,000 years of human history for the world's population to reach 1 billion, and only 200 years since that point to reach a population of 7 billion. This accelerated growth of the human population was made possible due to recent advancements in modern medicine and technology, as well as the development of more civilized societies which helps us to provide our offspring with much higher survival rates given our unrestricted access to food, water and resources. And while birth control and abortion can be seen as regulatory mechanisms, overall they aren't anywhere near sufficient enough to be seen as curbing the overall explosive population growth of the past 200 years of human history. The next characteristic is dedifferentiation. Most species on the planet are highly adapted to specific ecosystems. Humans, however, on a community level, can survive in a diverse range of ecosystems. Furthermore, cities and urban sprawls appear indistinguishable from one another, irrespective of their location on the planet, illustrating the same morphology and highly invasive borders as lesions found in aggressive malignant tumors. Aerial and satellite imagery of human activity and population centers illustrate this principle. Lastly, we have metastasis. In early human history, humans migrated by foot. With the course of time, however, we began developing new technologies that gave us the ability to migrate via waterways and oceans, aiding us in further colonial expansion. In present times, our gaze has turned to nearby celestial bodies of outer space, where the early efforts of space colonization have now begun with the inception of space programs probing for other life-sustaining planets. This further expansion through the process of metastasis ultimately causes lesions and ulcerations in the healthy surrounding tissue of the body. These four characteristics illustrate the degeneration of the human species 
from functioning as a segment of a higher order cooperative system by living within balance of the natural laws of nature as our ancestors did, to what we have become today, an amassment of seven billion and counting, self-serving, autonomous components, free to seek their own misguided agenda, separating ourselves from both the natural world around us and each other. Now, before moving on to the next physician, I'd like to include a quick honourable mention that is closely related to today's topic, Watiko. Watiko is a Native American mythological figure portrayed as a cannibalistic spirit that embodies greed, selfishness, and self-destructive behaviour. If you correlate Watiko with modern Western civilization and how we've been incentivized towards narrow self-interest, valuing capital over even life itself, we start to see what can be described as a collective narcissism with virus-like characteristics. Except, this virus cannot be isolated materially. It can only be observed in the human psyche. An excerpt from author Paul Levy's article states, quote, In a vampiric lineage, the Watiko virus's self-propagation is accomplished through the medium of the family system, be it our family of origin or the human family, as the legacy of abuse, be it physical, sexual, political, emotional, psychological, or spiritual gets passed down, both individually and collectively, and transmitted over generations, continually incarnating itself through the living. It's as if our species has unwittingly manifested our own collective psychosis, creating an epidemic of narcissistic abuse that resembles a mental virus. But could this description of Watiko possibly be connected to a macrocosmic cancer scenario? And if so, will we be able to recognize it? before it's too late. These questions remain to be seen. The next physician did not go through the established channels of publishing a research paper, but instead delivered his own personal testimony. Although merely anecdotal, he ended up delivering over 14 hours of one of the most intriguing scenarios imaginable. Astonishingly enough, he proposed that galaxies are, in fact, a larger analog version of an atom on a much larger scale of existence suggesting that our existence has a fractal nature to it. He expressed that we are experiencing a feedback loop of an integration process. So, just as atoms create covalent bonds that integrate to form molecules, galaxies, with the assistance of the dark energy of the universe, appear to form covalent bonds on a larger scale, as dark energy maps seemingly illustrate through the depiction of more than a million galaxies, along with thousands of supercluster galaxy formations. These similarities are mind-boggling. He describes that our known universe may actually be part of a larger DNA molecule on a larger scale. The general premise of his model seeks to incorporate philosophy and empirical data into a more holistic framework, where, rather than viewing the universe and our world through the lens of random, mechanistic, purposeless accidents, or through mere reductionism, we can instead begin to postulate our planet and galaxies existing as integrated, conscious components to the structure of a larger body. Therefore, a recontextualized model of reality. So by scaling the universe from micro to macro, we begin to see how our collective actions on the planet might eventually proliferate into other areas of the cosmos, causing DNA alterations and mutation of a cell on a larger scale. He later suggests that humanity's language or communication has been systematically hijacked by a larger cancer hive mind, similar to how cancer overwhelms and corrupts the communication of healthy cells. So just as cancer cells lose communication with the larger systems of the body, he argues that humans have lost communication with the larger systems of Earth, stating that our brains have become isolated and are unable to recognize the larger guidance from its environment. Just as malignant cells and tumors isolate themselves and are unable to recognize the larger guidance from its environment, In conclusion, the enigma that surrounds this information is extraordinary. But one thing is certain, the rate at which science has accelerated new discoveries is staggering, and many scientists and research groups are being overwhelmed with new publications daily. So, for the more ambitious and philosophical questions such as today's topic, it isn't a matter of not being able to hold up to scrutiny, but rather the lack of instrumentation to falsify such a hypothesis. Are galaxies integrating into a larger molecular structure? Are we unwittingly components to a larger cancer process. These questions could take hundreds, if not thousands of years to unravel, and I think for now, they will remain in the domain of science and philosophy as open-ended inquiries. Thank you for listening. For those of you inclined to further research this material, all of the relevant links will be posted in the description below. One of the most exquisite conjectures in science or religion. It's entirely undemonstrated, it may never be proved, but it's stirring. Our entire universe, to the furthest galaxy, we are told, is no more than a closed electron 
in a far grander universe we can never see. And that universe is only an elementary particle in another still greater universe, and so on forever. The big news coming out of science is that nature is self-similar across scale. Nature is self-similar across scale. This is big news, big understanding. And what does it mean? Well, it means, I'm sure you all have pondered the similarity between the structure of an atom, a galaxy, and a solar system. If you inquired about this, you were told it's coincidence. Well, P.W. Bridgman is the person who pointed out that a coincidence is what you have left over when you apply a bad theory. I think we're part of a greater wisdom than we will ever understand, a higher order. Call it what you want. You know what I call it? The big electron. <laughs> the big electron. Whoa. It doesn't punish, it doesn't reward, it doesn't even judge. It just is. And so are we, for a little while.